what up welcome back to the channel i'm Mordai jay and we are locked in this is the series premiere of power book four force the tommy egan spinoff episode one now we've seen the finale of book two and it was a good one so of course we're expecting a lot we have high expectations for tommy and his spinoff and it seems like it's going to start off good from all the trailers and clips that i've seen but before we jump into this Shout out to the notification gang. If you're new to the channel, you want to be a part of it. Hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Hit that like button. It's the easiest thing you can do. Now, Tommy, he's on a mission. We know he was headed out to California. He had a pit stop in Chicago. Is he going to stay in Chicago or is he going to continue his journey out to California? Let's find out. This is Power Book 4, Episode 1. We start off the episode with Tommy reliving some thoughts he had with his mom saying New York isn't safe. He's got to get up out of here. So he uncovers the Mustang. You know, the Mustang he's been riding around clean in New York City and he hops on the road. While he's on the road, of course, he has a lot of thoughts running through his mind. New York to California is a long trip. He has a flashback of when he held Tariq over the top of the roof because he felt like Tariq, we aren't family no more. After the things you've been doing, I don't want no parts of you. He gets to thinking about Keisha and what happened with her. Tasha shot her because she was a snitch. Now, you know, he was going to propose to her, take her in cash, treat him good. But he came home and found out that she was dead. It gets to the point where it seems like Tommy is about to take his life. He turns the lights off. He just starts speeding, but he turns it back on and he almost wrecks into a wall. He starts screaming and then he's like, you know what? Get yourself together, Tommy. And it looks like Tommy is headed to Chicago. Interstate 20, 125 miles. Tommy gets inside of Chicago and he actually pulls over. His plug, his connect out in California, keeps calling him. Tommy, where you at? He said, don't worry about it. I'm going to be out there. Just give me some time. I'm hopping on 66 today. He pulls out a picture of himself when he was younger. And it looks like he's in front of the house that's actually in this picture from when he was a kid. Now, it's some dude sitting outside talking about, hey, man, I'm the parking enforcement. You can't park here. Tommy's like, what, what are you talking about? And he gets out and he pretty much punks this guy. He's like, man, you see, when I slapped you in your head, it hurt, didn't it? Because it's cold out here. You lucky <laughs> he ain't got his gun, Tommy. He wasn't going to do nothing with that gun. But Tommy asked him, do you know what happened to the old lady that, that was living in this house? He tells Tommy, she's not dead. They moved her to Mulhern's, which seems like it's probably a, an older facility for older people where they come. Nursing home type. Tommy gets here and they're wheeling the lady out in a wheelchair. Now he's looking at her and you can tell that she's a little bit out of it. And he's just sitting there thinking, I haven't seen her in years. When they bring her out, Tommy looks at her, but he can't bear to say anything to her. So he actually just turns around and leaves. We get introduced to Diamond Samson. Now he's in prison right now and you see he's cutting hair. So what he's doing is you'll hear him say, CO, raise her up. It's so they can have accountability of where the razor is. And they know if it leaves the barbershop, either Diamond took it because he didn't report it using it or report putting it back down now he's cutting this older gentleman's head and the older guy is telling him when you leave here don't look back don't come back here and don't take that long on my haircut now the reason diamond is taking so long is because he just told the old man i might not ever see you again when i leave here so he's just taking his time because this is one of the people that he didn't build a bond with while being in prison and he tells diamond when you leave here don't ever 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 look back so whatever you do, you need to get on the straight and narrow and stay out of prison. After he gets done cutting the old man's head, he gets ready to head back to his cell. Now we see some people out here and there's other inmates in there watching him. Now they don't say nothing to him, but once he walks by, he tells everyone around him, yeah, we're going to let him get out of jail. Let him get comfortable. And then that's when we're going to put the pressure on him. So it looks like Diamond may have had an issue with this gentleman while they were in prison. And he must have a little street gang on the outside to deal with Diamond because Diamond actually used to be the head of CBI. Tommy's in Chicago. He just left where his grandmother is at. He's headed straight to a bar. It's about 10, 30, 11 in the morning and we get introduced to Gloria. Now, I, we did have an exclusive clip of her and Tommy and she's about to pull him up a little bit. This is going to be Tommy's new love interest. And if Tommy don't want her, I'll gladly take her off his hands. Now, Tommy's sitting here. He took him a shot of Jameson. She's pouring him up another one. And he's like, oh, you can read people? She's like, yeah, it looks like you just had a long day. Sometimes you need a drink early in the morning. Now, he smells some food in the back. And he's like, damn, it smells good in here. She's like, the kitchen ain't open right now. 
Now he starts making a little hint talking about the kitchen ain't open. Mm hmm. Tommy doing a little flirting. That drink already kicking in. And she tells Tommy, come on back later on tonight when the kitchen is actually open. Shit, I'll be back. But what are y'all making though? Cause I'm a picky eater. But Tommy, he says he'll eat anything and he really doesn't care. It's time for Diamond to get out. So when you leave, you gotta go pick up everything, all your valuables that you had when you came in. Now the guard is saying, man, these J's, ooh, I'll give you 150 for them. He's like, nah, they worth a little bit more than that. Now the guard's like, man, you were always the smartest on the block. But me and one of the other guards, we wanted to give you something to remember this place. Now, if I'm getting out of prison, I don't want anything that's gonna remind me of prison. But what they did was give them a starter kit. And the starter kit consists of different type of razors, clippers, scissors, because he knows that Diamond was a barber on the inside. Now we get to meet Diamond's little brother, Jannard. Now when he shows up, they hug each other. He's extremely happy, but he sees that his brother came out in socks and he's thinking, what, somebody got down on you? He's talking about going in there and getting into that action. But Diamond said, nah, man, I let them go. He needed some money to put in his pockets when he first left, you know what I'm saying? Now we see the whole difference between Jannard and his brother Diamond. Jannard, he's hype. He got the diamonds on. He just wants to look out for his brother, especially because he went to prison for 15 years and held it down. Now he wants to make sure that Diamond is straight because he's been doing a few things out in these streets. Tommy heard that kitchen was gonna be open a little bit later. He came back smoking a little cigarette outside the front of Dr. Parker's office. Now that's the name of the little bar. Now we get to see Vic Flynn. And he pulls up and he's like, hey, jack off, move your car, man. So you can tell that he has a little bit of authority because they also in that Bentley. And anybody riding around in the Bentley, rode a window down to talk to someone on the side of the street, they either got some power or some force behind them. He told Tommy to move the car. And then he said, I'm not going to tell you again, move the car. Now, we know Tommy has a smart mouth and he says, I'm a little bit confused. I thought you said you weren't going to tell me. But they get out. Vic flashes his gun and he has his little sidekick, Simon, over here. And... They start getting it in. Vic's uncle, Polly, he gets out of the back and he comes out and he talks to Tommy. Now he's asking him, pal, I'm on the schedule. It would be nice if you move your vehicle and get it out the way because Polly knows business. We don't want to start that now here. Let's just get this person out the way because we were on a tight schedule. And Tommy's like, see, that's how you ask somebody to move your car politely. This is Walter Flynn. This is Vic Flynn's father and Polly's brother. Now he runs the whole organization, the Flynn organization. He's at the head, then it's his brother, you have his wild son, and he also has a daughter, Claudia. Claudia, she wants to be in the streets. She knows Vic is running around the city doing drops with his uncle. She wants to do something. But Walter doesn't want her in any of this. She's his daughter. She should not be in the streets. She runs the books, she makes sure the numbers are good, and that's it. You stay in the house and he grabs her hands and say, look at this. You can't throw no punches with these hands. They're too delicate. So he wants to keep his daughter away from all this. But the same as we've seen with Diana, he wants her to run the books. And that's what he's trying to explain to her. You beat your brother in a couple of games of chess, but you aren't built for the street life. You stay here. You make sure our money is good. Everything is taken care of. And you also take care of me. That's because Walter knows he's a dangerous man and having your daughter in the streets never ends well tommy moves his vehicle so polly and them can go ahead and get the drop at the bar now polly is talking to tommy and he's saying i didn't catch your name tommy's saying i didn't throw it now the reason he wants to know about tommy is because tommy stood up for himself especially against vic that's because tommy doesn't know who the flynn family is when polly brings it up saying you don't want to anger them also are you coming or going because it's best you get to going or there will be problems and tommy's saying i'm gonna go but he's just thinking like, who, who are these guys? I don't know none of them. I'm just here smoking a cigarette, waiting for the kitchen to open up. On the inside, we see Vic talking to Gloria and he's trying to tell her, hey, I got the house in New Buffalo, you come hang out. And she's like, nah, there really ain't nothing between us. Plus your dad is the one putting all the money in your pockets. And he's like, look, man, that's my dad. I can't just turn on him, but me and you, we need to be able to talk. And she's basically telling Vic, nah, we good. There is nothing for us to talk about. If we do, we can do it right here. Vic is a little bit upset. First, Tommy pissed him off with not moving the car. Then he goes in and Gloria, she doesn't want to come and talk to my man. He told Simon, don't get drunk. I need you to watch Gloria. And when he comes out, Tommy is still sitting out here smoking a cigarette. But you hear Uncle Polly say, 
hey, whatever you're thinking about talking to Tommy, don't think about it. It's not worth it. Because if you do something to the Flynn's, we're going to have to get on your ass. Tommy comes back in. Gloria pours him up a glass of rum. She actually takes a little shot of it before she goes over to Simon because he's messing with the women. And they talk about get off of me. Now, if I'm Tommy, I would have seen her take a sip of my drink. I would have asked for another one. Like, I want a full shot. But, hey, when you playing that game, you're trying to get the women. Yeah, she take a drink of that. You just drink off of it, too. Gloria goes over there and she stops Simon from harassing the customers, especially the women. And he over here. <laughs> yeah, whatever, Gloria. Now, he's supposed to stay sober and not get messed up. Vic told him to watch Gloria. What's the first thing he does? Oh, Vic is gone. Let me pour up a little bit. This is the scene that I broke down that they released earlier. Simon leaves. He goes outside to use the bathroom. Now, Tommy follows him. And on the phone, you hear Simon talking about the drop is going to be at 3 a.m. Now, Tommy comes out there and pretty much disturbs all of this. One, because he's seen, okay, you're with Vic, and I just got into it with him and Polly up front, and you were in there disrespecting people. So Tommy turns him around, and he gets to whooping on him. After he whoops on him, puts his hand through the gate, and he stomps it, he takes his phone. He takes Simon's phone, and he sees a text message from Vic that says, Hey, Simon, meeting moved to 2 a.m., 16 West, Randolph. And Tommy says, you know what? Larry Bird is a legend because earlier <laughs> Simon and Vic said, oh, he's from Boston. Larry Bird and Tom Brady. He's like, no, nah, Larry Bird is a national treasure. But F Tom Brady. Gloria comes out to check on him and see what's going on. She sees Simon laying on the ground. Tommy's like, look, I'm not going to be here long enough to find out what comes from this. Is it going to fall on you? And she's like, nah, but your soup is ready. Now, I told y'all earlier when that kitchen opens, Tommy was in here flirting. And of course, that kitchen was open. They didn't even shut the bar down. They just left a body in the alley, said whoever's in the bar, who cares? They went straight to the house, not unless this room is in the back of the bar. Now we see Claudia. Her dad just told her she can't be out in the streets. So what does she do? She leaves, she actually goes to the bar. She goes to a little club. They in there, look like they raving. The guy's saying, oh man, this drink right here, you gotta sip this. She taking straight shots. And everybody's like, man, I've never seen her before. She's like, I've been told what to do by men too much in my life, basically referring to her father, Walter. She's out here partying. She got that drink in her system. She sees a nice little woman over here. She goes talking to her. They on the dance floor. They kissing. I'm like, man, these are the parties I avoid. Claudia and this girl go back to the room and they get it on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. A little girl on girl action. Now, Claudia was also taking a little bit of drugs while she was in the club. So she asked this girl, where'd you get this drug from? I haven't had anything like this. Is there any more? Now, what it looks like is Claudia is trying to put together a plan to be able to get some drugs and maybe move them through the club without her father knowing. Because you see, Walter didn't want her in any of this. Tommy and Gloria, they just got done making ugly faces. And he sees, oh, what, what, what is this? You, you served in the military? She's like, nah, that was my husband. He deployed and he never came back. So she didn't really get to experience the whole relationship and how marriage was because once he got deployed, he's probably killed in action. Now she asked Tommy, has he ever been married? And he said he was close. And this is when he has another flashback of him and Keisha when he was about to show uh, Cash that ring. But when he went over there, he found Keisha dead and told Cash to stay outside. Yeah, Tommy didn't get to experience real love either. Thanks a lot, Tasha. Tommy checks the phone. Now, you remember he got the phone from Simon that said the drop was at three o'clock, but then it got moved up at two when he checked the text message. Now, Vic is waiting on Simon, but he's like, where the hell is Simon at? I told him not to get drunk. Tommy shows up. Tommy shows up and puts two bullets through the window and tells him the next two, they'll be in your head. And then he shows that he has Simon's phone. So what he does is comes over and he takes Vic's gun and he tells him we're gonna go meet your connect whoever you're supposed to be picking up from I'm rolling with you now Tommy is wilding out this is his first day in Chicago people and this is what he's doing he didn't already got into it with the Flynn family and now he's about to try to meet the new connect because he wants to make his own establishment within Chicago so they take the elevator down and he's asking Vic all of the questions how many people should be in there how many are they expecting when they get down there they see Jannar down here and he's talking about this isn't a CBI deal. This is just him. And it turns out he actually knows Vic. But the two guys that they're buying from, they don't know what they're doing. 
it looks like they're sitting there with some fake product because Tommy calls them out and says, this is your first time making a deal. How do you know that these drugs aren't stepped on? Meaning mixed with fake drugs or not drugs at all. Now, Tommy's trying to control the situation. Jannard's like, Vic, what are you doing, man? You done messed up everything. Now, the plug, the connect, Zamos, you hear Vic say he lied to all of us. Now, these two, they look like junkies and they don't know what they're doing. They start to shoot. Now, you got to remember, Tommy has already took Vic's gun. So he has two of them. These junkies, their guns start <laughs> click, click, click because they're empty. Tommy comes around with his two guns. You got to know your clip. You got to know how many bullets are in there. Now, he shoots up one of them, tears them down. The other guy, he shoots him a couple of times saying, I got a couple of bullets in here. Don't let me get to one. Now they're trying to figure out what exactly is going on. The junkie that's still alive, he runs off. Vic's talking about this would have never happened if I had my gun. Tommy hands it to him. And you remember, you got to know how many are in your clip. He tells Vic, you got one left. Now, Jannar is looking at this and he's thinking, this dude saved us. We need to give him some kind of money or something because Tommy's going to take the drugs with him. Now, he's telling Vic because Vic showed up to this operation. He didn't even have all the money, which would have already been a no go. But it just looks like Vic, he's addicted to the power that his father has. So he shows up to these meetings without all the money. Jannar is thinking, hey, Vic, you messed all this up. You got to pay him. Whatever, <laughs> whatever we pay in this guy, this white guy, it's going to come out of your cut. Now, he looks at Tommy and says, some of that money is mine. You going to give me some of the kickback? Tommy zips up the bag. He walks off with the money and the drugs. Jannard and his brother Diamond, they're walking around the streets that they used to run back in the day. Now, you got to remember, Diamond just did 15 years and he's out. And Jannard is saying, yeah, it's crazy, man. These young dudes, they out here just starting wars. They doing all kinds of stuff. It ain't the same as it was before you got locked up. Jannar is explaining to his brother what happened. This white guy came in. He couldn't have been with Vic or with the Flynn family because he came in and he basically shut everything down. He controlled the whole room. He took the drugs and the money and he dipped like a ghost. Casper, the white ghost. Tommy's out here elevating himself. Ghost was the man in New York. Tommy's trying to become the man out here. They already calling him the white ghost, Casper. Now Diamond hears this and he's thinking, our money was tied up in that. We need to find out who this white boy is. Claudia and Vic, they get to talking. Now, what it looks like is Claudia is actually the one that's going to make the moves and have the brains within this family. We know that she's controlling the books, but she's talking to her brother Vic, saying these dumb deals that you're doing, showing up without the money, that's never going to work. On top of that, dad isn't going to let Claudia do anything. So you hear Vic saying, well, we need to find a new connect, a coke connect, because dad's not going to let us. What did we just see from Claudia last night? She went out. She had a good time. She had some pills. Yeah, it looks like she's the one that's going to be making all the power moves in this family. Now, all she's telling Vic is, I don't want to be worried about you out in these streets. And he's saying, you ain't got to worry about me. And I put that on mom. And she's saying, if mom was alive, she would be worried too. That just shows you Vic, he's equivalent to Kane. He's out here wilding out. We got to keep him under wraps. The next day, Tommy's trying to figure out who this Flynn family is. Vic's wilding out. Polly came and he was assertive with everything. So he brings up some Google stuff, rare details about Chicago's Flynn family. So, you know, a lot of these big organizations, they may have ties to something dirty, but it can never stick. So it's just saying a couple of details you might need to know about the Flynn family. Then last night, he also heard about CBI from Jannard. So he looks up who CBI is and we see head of CBI sentenced to 15 years. So our man Diamond, he went to jail because he was the head of the organization. And that's why he told his brother Jannard, things don't look the same like when we ran the streets. You know what I'm saying? Everything has changed. Also, Tommy's connect out in California is calling. Tommy, where you at? I need updates. Where you at? You supposed to get on the 66. Where you at? He just hangs up on him and then he drives off. Tommy goes back and this time he actually talks to his grandmother. Now they're out in the greenhouse and she doesn't really remember who he is. Now he's trying to convince her his name is Tommy and he actually shows her the picture of him when he was younger. And when she sees it, she can kind of remember. Not only did she remember who he is, probably because she heard him say Tommy, but she probably noticed the house in the background of that picture. So she's like, Tommy. While Tommy was out there talking to his grandma, there's somebody in the window watching. And when Tommy leaves, he comes out. Now, Tommy can hear some footsteps behind him, so he gets his gun ready. And when he turns around, he's like, who sent you? 
Well, this gentleman's name is JP and he's saying, no one's came and seen Miriam in six years. So who are you? And Tommy says, I'm her grandson. Who are you? He's like, I'm her grandson also. It turns out this is Tommy's brother. His mom is Kate Altho, but he calls her Catherine. And Tommy is saying, she's no royalty. No one calls her that, it's just Kate. Now his father said that Kate was dead. So that's why he never knew nothing about her. Now these two, they're kind of catching up. And Tommy is saying, Kate, she's pretty much dead to me. We can just leave it at that. Is that enough details? And JP's like, yeah, okay. If you feel that way, all right, I can agree with you. Now, Tommy says, let me get your number so we can keep in contact with each other. Because he just found out that he has a brother. Not only did he have a black brother in Ghost, he has a black brother in JP, a real brother. Jannard meets back up with his brother Diamond and he actually takes him to a barbershop. And when they go in, Diamond's looking around, got a puncher bag. He's like, damn, this place is nice. Well, it turns out his brother Jannard bought this barbershop for him and it's all legit. Taxes are paid for, it's in his name. He doesn't have anything to worry about because we heard him say, you know what? I changed, I'm going in a different direction. So his brother Jannard actually looked out for him and got him a barbershop. Now Tommy's filling up and he's getting ready to get back on the highway to 66 and head on out to California. I mean, it's been an eventful day. He got in a fight with a couple of people. He got some sex. He got a couple of drinks in, he met his brother. He even robbed some people, but he looks at the phone number that his brother gave him. He crumbles it up and he jumps in the car. But before he leaves, he thinks about it and he goes back over to the trash can and he gets his brother JP's number out of the trash can. Back at the barbershop, Diamond is sitting here and he's just enjoying everything. He's like, all right, I'm out. I got a barbershop. My brother hooked me up. But then this gentleman walks in. Now, Diamond doesn't know who he is, but this guy knows who Diamond is. Turns out this is Officer Bennigan and he's saying, oh, welcome home, Diamond. I just want to get my hair cut a little bit. And Diamond sees that. So he already knows the cops are going to be on him because he used to be at the head of an organization, the CBI. But he doesn't live that life no more. You already know what they're thinking. You got a barbershop and you're already out. There's got to be something going on. So they're going to be checking on him. And I can already tell you that this Officer Bennigan, he's going to be an asshole. Diamond tells him in a couple of days when we're open, you can come get your hair cut. The first one is on me, it's free. But Ben again makes a little slick remark and say, oh no, I pay for everything I get. Basically saying, you were dirty, you went to jail, I'm gonna do everything I can to bring you back down. Tommy's trying to get on the road, get the hell out of Chicago, go to California and do what he's supposed to. But we see five SUVs pull up. I'm talking about the 2022 Escalades, all black. They box Tommy in. He looking, he trying to dodge him and everything. Well, these are the hop out boys. They surround Tommy and Uncle Polly hops out with the shotgun and tells Tommy, go ahead, get out the car. We told you to get the hell up out of here. And what are you still doing in Chicago? Matter of fact, you coming with us. They pull up to Walter Flynn's house. Now we see Claudia up at the top. Now they're walking Tommy to the back to actually talk to Walter. Walter starts talking to him and he's asking Tommy, did he know about a lady and a cow that kicked over the little fire and who was the first victim? Tommy's like, I guess the cow. But Tommy wants to know exactly what am I here for? Tommy's like, I must be here for one or two reasons. And since I ain't dead, you can go ahead and thank me for saving your son. And then he actually offers the bag back to Walter Flynn because he did save his son. He was about to go into a setup with two junkies. He asked Tommy, where are you headed? Tommy said, away from here. He said, do you have a time schedule? Tommy said, no. Nah. He said, a man with no clock has either too much time or too much money. Either way, one of it is going to run out. And your time in Chicago has ended. Vic shows up late and he sees that Tommy is here. Now, Tommy didn't already spilled everything to Walter about what his son was doing. So his dad kicks the bag over to him. And you know, Vic is like, man, I'm going to have to get rid of this boy, Tommy, man. He messing up everything. The plug calls Tommy back. What are you doing? I'm your boss. Tommy says, you know what? I'm not coming out to Cali. I don't work for anybody. I'm my own boss. Hangs up the phone and throws it out the window. Tommy hits that U-turn. Walter Flynn, you just messed up and let Tommy stay in your city by angering him. There you go, episode one of Power Book 4 Force. I'm telling you, we got action in the first episode, so we already know what we're expecting from Tommy. Let me know what you think is going to happen between Vic and Tommy moving forward. And also, 
Is Tommy and Gloria, did that seem like a good thing? Let me know what you guys think. I'm Old IJ. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Remember, Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, we got the Power Book 2 season finale, live show discussion, and then on Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern, we'll have Tommy Book 4 Force Episode 1 live show discussion. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.